Welcome to my newest video about Flight Zoomer. In the last two videos on YouTube I showed you how the system worked on actual handsets, but this time I want to demonstrate you the newest features just using the apps on the emulators. The topic which I'm going to cover are the new autopilot modes, which will be released in the upcoming version 2 release. FlightZoomer is going to support a long list of 14 new autopilot modes which are realized as an overlay over the APM guided mode. On this slide here you see the MCP, that's the mode control panel of the Boeing 787. And the FlightZoomer uh, user layer on the ground station as well as the functionalities are closely modeled after the capabilities of this system. So this gives you an entirely different user experience which can't be compared or matched by anything else ever seen in the area of drones. So how does the system architecture look like and what can you expect from it? First there is a ground station with a touch screen that gives the pilot comprehensive control over the flight path of the drone. Second, we have an onboard smartphone, which provides the processing layer and works as a companion computer. These two devices are tightly coupled over a bidirectional data link via cellular networks. Now the principle is very simple. Commands to activate the autopilot modes are sent from the ground station to the companion computer. The actual execution then is done completely and autonomously by the companion computer. For example, the interaction with the flight controller is done from the companion computer via Bluetooth and MAFLINK. Only user layer relevant information is fed back to the ground station. One of the principle is that any send command is confirmed back to the ground station so a perfect awareness can be provided to the pilot about the state of the autopilot and also the communication. The communication itself is stateless so even when I connect with a second ground station immediately the ground-based and the airborne systems are in sync. On this slide we can see an overview over the 14 new autopilot modes by FlightZoomer. On the left hand side we see here the three channels of the autopilot. One channel supports the lateral movement, then another channel deals with the vertical modes and the the third one covers the speed modes. Horizontally we have three groups of distinct kind of autopilot modes. First there are the basic modes, next are radio navigation modes and then last but not least the flight plan modes. So that's enough from the theory. Let's begin with the practical part and fire up the two emulators. What we have here are the two apps that are used. On the right hand side is the ground station and on the left hand sa side the companion computer which is uh, attached to the aircraft and is communicating with the flight controller via MAVLINK Bluetooth. We are already in flight locked mode and in this setup here spe special is that the everything done in the physics um, like the flight controller and the copter itself is simulated. I compiled this in a this app in a configuration where the commands that are received from the ground station are translated into a simulated movement which is then fed back. So on this setup we can see the full functionality as it is working from an end-to-end -end perspective. Then let's start with the first mode. The first mode we want to look at is the speed mode. The reason for this is that 
any other mode that we have depends on a forward speed of the aircraft. Um, so with this speed mode I can activate select a target speed that's done here. Here we have the mode control panel once more. Here is the target speed. This is the selector of the target speed and that's the button to uh, activate the speed which is highlighted when once the mode is active. Overall first we have also to switch on the autopilot. When I do this you will see for a short moment that the button turns red on the lower half which means that for this time the command has not yet been confirmed from the um, from the companion computer on board the aircraft. So for the time the button is red we can't be 100% sure that the command has been activated. So I activate now the autopilot, you will see it for a mo short moment it's red. So now, mode guided. now the APM switch to guided mode. We see that the three channels we have seen here in each of the channels a default mode is now activated and the mode is chosen so that we keep the direction we keep the altitude and we keep the speed and as we had speed of zero before it also now has a speed of zero with the speed mode I can no now choose via the selector I tap long on the knob and then I get the turn wheel basically. I can um, choose the speed I want, something about 3 meters per second. Speed 3 confirmed. For a moment, also this button now turned red, and already we have established the forward speed of 3 meters per second. If I zoom here, we will see it moves slowly forward. The speed can be changed at any time. I can just repeat this sequence, press long, the turn knob, then go for some, for example, almost speed 10. Confirmed. Or again, back to f very slow. I don't want to move far away during the video. Speed 4 confirmed. OK, the second mode we want to see is the track over ground mode. This is the default lateral mode and it allows to fly in a direction which I select here with this turn knob and the aircraft is exactly flying into that direction irrespective of any available crosswind component. I can again press long on the turn knob then I get the where I can enter any direction now more or less turn to the south please track 191 confirmed and now it turns there I can change the track as often as I want I can even change it while it is turning and if it requires to reverse the direction of the turn it, it will even support that. Good, we are coming to the second lateral basic mode which is the heading select and hold mode. This is a variation of the track over ground mode and the difference is that with the heading mode the nose is pointing into the target direction but as soon as there is a crosswind component the aircraft starts drifting to the side and with the track over ground mode it was guaranteed that it flew exactly into the target direction I can activate it with this, li with this little toggle switch upon the direction display I just press switch to heading mode and it changes to heading mode back to track switch to track mode back to heading
switched to heading mode. And now setting a new direction, go going north. Heading 357 confirmed. So that's the heading mode. I switch back to track and then switch to track mode. Let's see the next one. Now this is a very special and unique autopilot mode that is not available on any other um, drone autopilot that I am aware of. It's the turn rate select and hold mode. What I basically can do is determine the radius of the turn and I do this by setting the turn rate that means how many degrees per second will the turn be done. I do this with the same selector we have seen tapping long on the selector gives me the possibility to set the direction but when I tap to the left or to the right I can go through these settings that are called bank limit here. Don't be irritated by the numbers. These are copied from the real Boeing uh, MCP. With a uh, flight zoomer we have the setting for auto which means that the turn rate is coming from the aircraft settings, the default turn rate for this aircraft. Then we have here 5 degrees per second, we have a turn of 10 degrees per second, we have 20 degrees per second, 30 or 60. While 60 degrees per second result in quite narrow turns, tight turns, we can see it how this looks like. Track 220 confirmed. Immediately I go into the new direction. I can select the other extreme th which would be a turn rate of 5 degrees per second and then we will see that I get really wide and nice turns. Track 246 confirmed. Let me do a longer turn. Go to 200. Somewhere like here. Track 320 confirmed. And now it's turning. The turn rate can be changed even during the turn. I have set it now to the highest value while the aircraft was still turning. That's possible. So, that's about the lateral modes. We now come to the vertical basic modes. Until now we have just flown at the initial altitude and we will now see what we can do with f climbing or descending. The first of these modes is now a new category. It is not only a mode for which I select the target and it will hold it. It has the capability to arm an altitude. Arming the altitude means that I can arm it, a new altitude, which I'm just going to do. I again press long on the turn knob, go to, I don't know, yeah, why not, 500 or so. Altitude now, 503 armed. this altitude is now only armed. It will continue flying at 437 meters. And I do need now any of the other uh, vertical basic modes to reach this altitude. So we can go, we can have a look at the vertical speed first. I just quickly bring the slides. So here we are. I will now explain the vertical speed. Here the target is in this display and the this thumb wheel is used to 
uh, set the target vertical speed. I can activate this vertical speed in directly by just setting vertical speed 40 confirmed an upward vertical value. Speed 79 confirmed. I tap vertical on the touch speed screen 130 confirmed. and draw vertical down 147 confirmed or up to to command an upward vertical speed. This green banana here is the the location where I will have reached the target or the armed altitude. 495, 499, 503, here it stops. And the light for vertical speed um, is now clear again and the altitude is hold. It just automatically changed from vertical speed mode to altitude hold mode. The same way I can set a lower altitude, let's say 470. Altitude 472 armed. And then I need to move up. What I do, I press. Vertical speed minus 15 confirmed. I tap on this wheel and I move on the touch screen Vertical up. Vertical speed minus 31 confirmed. To initiate a descent. Vertical speed minus 46 confirmed. Any value that I set Vertical is confirmed. Speed minus 61 confirmed. And here again, the green banana here, I will have reached the 472 uh, meters altitude. I want to bring back the copter in my area. Track 298 confirmed. Good. That's about the vertical speed mode. The third vertical base basic mode is the flight path angle select and hold mode. It is a variation of the vertical speed mode and like with heading and track over ground mode we have this toggle switch over the vertical speed uh, display and I can change between vertical speed and flight path angle here at any time. We can initiate an upward climb. Vertical speed 43 confirmed. Vertical speed 81 confirmed. Vertical speed 149 confirmed. And can then switch to uh, flight path angle mode at any time. Switched to flight path angle mode. Back to vertical speed. Switched mode. to vertical speed mode. Flight path angle. Switched to flight path angle mode. The flight path angle. The difference is that here, I'm really, actually now flying this climb gradient over ground, the 36 degrees. So, re irrespective of the forward speed, it will stick to this um, climb angle. If I double the forward speed, then the resulting vertical speed would also double, just to keep the angle. I can also go down. Let's go over all the hold. Hold altitude 659. No. Flight path angle 26.61 confirmed. Flight path angle minus 14.13 confirmed. So now I'm descending with 14 degrees descent angle. So, we are coming to the next mode, it's the flight level change mode. It's the last one of the basic vertical modes. Here, I don't need to set a target for vertical speed or FPA. I use this button just to initiate a climb or a descent automatically towards the armed 
altitude and I basically have nothing to do more than selecting a new target altitude Let's go somewhere here. Altitude 438 arm. And press the flight level change. Flight level change activated. Button. Immediately a descent is initiated and it will now descend and capture the armed altitude at the location where the green banana is again. Something I have to say about all the altitudes mode is that whenever there is a changing descent or climb gradient or speed there will be smooth transitions so we are now approaching the armed altitude and long before having reached the t armed altitude it will start slowing down the descent and will then very gently capture the armed altitude so we are now coming to the second group of modes it's the these are the radio navigation modes in real aviation radio navigation takes place if uh, aircrafts tune their radio receivers to frequencies of uh, radio stations on the ground we have three modes here one is the VR localizer mode that would be the first one where I tune into a VR and then select a radio means a course and then follow that radio by the autopilot before I can demonstrate that let me show you on the relay server here let's have a look at the navigation database. With this button at the bottom here we can um, change or modify or create a virtual navigation aids, airports and so on. I select one of the things I have defined, I zoom into, so here is now my airspace and that's the airport where I'm currently are and let's pick this viewer here to fly a radial of 90 degrees means the exact course to the east and we want to fly north initially and capture that radial and fly then along it that's what we want to do I come here because I need to read the frequency which is uh, defined configured for this viewer. We have here the data it's the NE1 viewer the frequency is 111.6 that's the position. When we are here already let's have a look at the runway we, runway we want to approach later. The blue uh, pins are the airports, here is the runway, selected runway and this is the airport. I mean that's the, an uh, hierarchy in the data model, there is our airports and attached to airports are runways, one or more. Here we have one with two runways but this airport has this single runway, it's the LSHG airport and here we have the runway the runway 15 primary direction of 145 degrees turns into the name runway 15 it's degrees um, divided by 10 and when we see the ILS frequency is here of the primary direction it's 111.1 and the capturing altitude is 470 meters. Keep these uh, figures in mind. That's also how real pilots have to work and navigate. They have their plans and they know 
um, the frequencies and the data of their approaches and navigation aids and then they go and fly using the stuff. We have here the localizer button. That's the button we are going to use to um, arm the localizer capturing. The VR localizer mode is again a free fold mode like the altitude arm capture and hold. We initially are moving with one of the basic lateral modes until we cross the radial that we have selected and then it captures the radial and then from then on holds it. That's basically what this mode here does. So we need now to go to the NAFRAD page in the FMS and here we can tune our radios. I would first enter the frequency we have seen of the viewer on the left hand side. We see the ID now is appearing and we enter the radial cores here. So go back to the autopilot. I could also enter the ID directly, don't necessarily need to enter the frequency. Uh, alternatively I could enter the NE1 ID and I would achieve the same. Go back to the autopilot and we now see the radial direction, the deviation indicator, that means currently the radial is to the left of the course we are finally flying. I can give a forward speed. Speed 9 confirmed. And turn a bit to the right to have a more realistic um, track 23 confirmed. Intersection, intersecting angle, but it's not necessarily I can catch at any angle. Arm Selected the localizer, localizer. and now we will so see how it turns towards the VOR on the radial that we have selected. It will now continue in this direction forevermore unless we go to track hold again, for example. Now, in the last video, I, pilot switched off. I have already shown how I have flown an ILS approach. The ILS approach is very similar. That's then basically this mode for lateral, the lateral channel, and this mode for the vertical channel in, in combination. These two are activated using the app for approach button and first I again, let me switch the slide, bring the emulator again here. We need also for the ILS um, mode now need to go to the flight management system have here the entry for the ILS frequency. Remember we said 111.1. .1. I said it and other than for the viewer I directly also get the runway course automatically set. That's the 145 you remember from the navigation database. Then we go back to the autopilot then we now have here the runway and this is the 145 degree course. I will basically turn now left and then again left and then intersect the extended runway, runway center line and will then fly along the ILS. I switch on the flight mode guided autopilot, give a reasonable forward speed, something like with 10. Speed 10 confirmed. 
turn to the left into the downwind. It must be point north, a bit to the left of north, like here. Track 331 confirmed. I also set the 470 meters um, altitude because we have seen that. Um, Altitude 469 armed. That the ILS capturing altitude is 470 meter. I use the flight level change activated. The flight level change mode, so I automatically will go there just by pushing the button. No need to use the thumb wheel and set a vertical speed. Here is the runway. We will now then turn to the left. I already see on the deviation indicators that I am below the glide slope. That means I can now turn left, roughly here. Track 234 confirmed. And next would already then be activating or arming the ILS uh, approach mode. I can do this now. ILS armed. So before we are crossing the extended runway center line, we will turn left and immediately after that start the descent. So turning left, we already see the glide slope coming closer from above. Soon we will have crossed it in level flight and the descent will begin then. ILS fully established. Now we have to descend. It's now descending. There is an aircraft setting where I can say or define whether the aircraft will exactly stop at the runway begin which might be fine for a copter or whether it shall just continue the descent steadily as during the final. Here the aircraft will continue flying on the runway altitude. So that was the demonstration of an ILS approach with the emulators. So we are coming to the last three modes. These are the flight plan modes. Similar to the auto mode of the APM, Flight Zoomer also has a complete route planning um, feature, which is again modeled after the real Boeing FMS, like it's present on the Dreamliner or other modern Boeing aircraft. Also here we rely on the navigation database. I have to go first to the FMS here and then define a route consisting of waypoints as they are defined or available here. I will start at the airport LSHE HG, go to the WN1 waypoint, WW1, CCC, NE1, HOM, NN1, and back. So let's go to the FMS, to the root page, define the origin, LSHG, click bring it back to the scratch pad and put it into the destination as well. Then we have possibility to set the cruise speed and altitude here. I will put in 15s 
meters per second and 500 meter altitude then here we have the possibility to store a route that is completed this one is not yet completed and to later load it again so we can now go to the next page and enter the waypoints the first one would be WN1 WN1 enter then WW1 enter I think CCC then NE1 on the next page home and which one was this? I can go and quickly see NN1 and then one so go back to the first page and we see now that with 15 meters per second I have a total flight duration of 2 minutes and 31 seconds I could change the speed to 20 without specifying the altitude it, it will stay two things will change, it will calculate again the total duration of the flight and here we can see how the turn radius will change because if I am flying faster and the turn rate is constant it's picking the standard turn rate from the aircraft settings if I'm flying faster the turn will be wider so let's see how this look you have seen now it works. We must make sure being not too fast, for example here if going a bit faster this will not be doable anymore so the speed must be selected to so that the flu route actually is flyable. This one is now fine. I can execute it at the moment when I press execute the route is loaded to the companion computer what I want to demonstrate to you now is uh, the storage feature I can press and I can enter a name demo press store and it already changes as the loaded route I can delete the route I press the delete button, delete is written into the scratchpad, I apply this delete to this, to the root and everything is removed. The root is empty again but I can just now load the root that we have created. I write demo, press load and here it is again. I press exec once more and now the root is loaded let's go over to the MCP and we are ready to fly now what modes do we have I switch on the autopilot flight mode guided we have these two buttons here the LNAV and the VNAV the LNAV is for the lateral channel it follows the flight plan laterally this mode can be used alone with one of the basic vertical modes to fly any vertical profile I would like or I can in addition to the LNAV mode select the VNAV mode using this button here then it will fly exactly the vertical pro profile that is defined we see here this little TC and TD marks TC is top of climb and TD is top of descent. When I activate both modes now at the same time the aircraft will have reached cruise altitude at this point and will start descending to the destination here at this point. 
I will start the lateral navigation mode now and keep it flying for some moments at this altitude and we will see how the top of climb point is moving. Then I will activate the VNAV mode and we will follow the flight plan vertically. I activate LNAV. Lateral navigation activated. It will go to the first waypoint, turn with the standard turn rate. You see the TC is here. I have to activate the VNAV and I'm climbing now. Here I will have reached the top of climb. The top of descent depends on whether I have loaded an ILS. If I go now to the navigation radio page, load the, IFS, the ILS we have seen before, I have to select the map mode here. Then we see that the top of descent mode point has, has been moved because we will now start descending here because we only reach need to reach the altitude to capture the ILS which is 470 meters. We are cruising now at 500 meters and are now it begins descending it will have reached the 470 meters here and will stay there So what we have seen here is the lateral navigation, LNAV mode and the VNAV mode. The flight plan speed is different than this speed. It is really the value we have set here on the route page, the cruise speed. So these have been the 14 autopilot modes offered by FlightZoomer. These are really exciting features and thanks for watching.